Welcome back. This project we're going to be looking at CAM Project 4.2 out of the Technical Drawing 101 book. Uh, this one here is going to be our introduction to polar arrays and we're going to work on some trimming and P edit, polyline edit. And so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, welcome back. Uh, let's take a look at CAM Project 4.2. This is one of the uh, the, the more difficult ones, I'd say, um, well, at least it's difficult looking. Uh, if we take it step by step, we should be able to bang it up pretty quick, though. Uh, so in the textbook here, uh, page 222, in the uh, Technical Drawing 101 book uh, by Smith, Ramirez, and Fuller, let's go ahead and start the project. Um, I'm going to select the file. I'm just going to start a new file in this case. Um, and we're going to go ahead and go to the, at the Model tab. Very good. Uh, and so what we're going to do is uh, create a set of circles and then start cutting out the edges like a scallop. And basically this is some sort of a, uh, a keyway kind of a project for a mechanical project. So, so let's go ahead and start um, the circle command. I'm going to start start the circle at the center of 14 comma 11 and then we're going to go and do a 6 inch diameter so I'm going to switch to D for diameter on the command line and type 6 so 6 inch diameter zip in there and there's our nice little green circle uh, and now we're going to uh, draw a second circle with a 5.33 inch diameter and there's a couple ways we could do that. We could do that with an offset command, or we just draw a new circle. And it's it's probably fast enough. And this time I'll go up and hit, go ahead and go to the uh, circle tool and choose center diameter. And this time I'm going to shift right click and choose the center O snap and float my hoover my cur cursor over that first circle. And so my second circle is hooked right up to the center line. And so it's asking me for the diameter. I'm going to type in uh, 5.33 inches. There we go. All right, very good. And we're going to enter add a center line uh, to the circle. And so we're going to use one of the fancy uh, dimensions. And so under the annotation, under the annotation ribbon, there's a center mark. Okay. And so we're going to just take a look at this center mark first. I'm going to select that circle there and hit enter. So that's kind of fast. Uh, it's a very nice traditional way of looking at the center mark for sure. And uh, that, that'll be helpful. And finally, we're going to go ahead and draw a two inch circle in diameter at the right of the first quadrant. And so another O snap, I'm going to start the circle command. We're doing a two inch diameter, right? So go back to the home ribbon, circle, diameter. And where do we want to put it? The command, the book wants us at the quadrant of the outer circle. So I'm going to type in QAD quadrant, QAD, enter. And now notice my command line saying circle of. So it means I told it to start a circle at the quadrant, and then it's asking, okay, the quadrant of, right? And so I'm going to just hoover over that circle. Notice I'm hoovering anywhere near that, that midpoint of that circle. Click there, and the diameter is going to be two inches. So there's your, your second two inch circle there. And now we're going to go ahead and, and activate the array command. And out of the box, the default array command is the rectangular, as you can see. So we need to use the drop down flyout below it. And we're going to go out and use the polar array. And at this point, we're going to use the polar array and select that guy here and hit enter. Command line is asking us for the um, base point. And I'm going to choose the the shift right click center of any one of those concentric circles. The command line is now asking us tell it is asking us for a uh, number of items, and so I'm going to just verify that the I'm going to type I for items and hit six. It was defaulted to six, okay. And in fill angle of hit enter, and then we'll do a F for fill angle of 360. We just I mean, these are default, and obviously it's already working fine, so, and there you go. And that is the, um, and then we'll type X for exit, and that is the polar array. I'll zoom extents just to kind of lock in there. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, 
start to chop out that, that outer circle. And so we are going to erase the larger diameter circle. So I'm going to type the erase command with my left hand. Pick it with my right. And now what I'm going to do is type the trim command. I'll, I'll, I'll show you where the trim command is. We'll use this trim command up here off the uh, ribbon. Same command. And I'm just going to start going hog wild, okay? And so I'm going to start trimming these out here. And see what the trim command does? Anytime there is object, it will it'll take its toll. And now I'm having a hard time trimming these circles. Why? Because there's only technically one. See, by using the trim the, the new way, we need to select the cutting edge. And so I'm going to type T for cutting edge. And now I'm going to just select this guy and that guy hit enter and now I should be able to cut that trim that circle out there uh, oh cannot trim this object I wonder why oh I do know why it's, it's still an associated it's still an associated array my my apologies there and so well you, so you notice here how if you select any one of the arrayed circles the whole object kind of still lights up and that's because it's still an associative array um, and what we can do is uh, close the array. I want to just explode it. I'm just going to close the array, and I'm going to just explode that array. And now I have separate objects. And I bet you the trim command will work better this time. And so we'll just go ahead. Yep, it does. That that new fancy old trim command is just so sweet and fast. All right. So there's your there's your gear that's starting to show, starting to show pretty quick. Um, and now we're going to create a slot in the top of that gear, and we're going to do a uh, draw a circle of diameter 2.67 inches, centered on the existing cam. Okay, no problem. So we're going to start the circle command again, diameter, and from where we need to find the center of something. Well, each one of these arc segments has a center. And, and so I can shift right click and choose the center O snap of any one of those arc segments. All right, and so they're all, even though it's not a circle, it's still, these are all arcs. And of course, the uh, having the center mark there is, is super helpful also because you, <laughs> you can just still do a circle um, from the intersection right there. And the circle that they want drawn is a 2.6 Seven. Oh, so it's in radius mode. Type D for diameter, and then go 2.67. There we go. Um, and now I'm going to draw another circle, the diameter of 0.325, with the using the point where the vertical center line and the new circle intersect at the center point. Okay. And so I'm going to do another circle diameter right here at the inner circle uh, intersection. So that's also the quadrant. Um, if I shift right click, I can choose intersection, the same, and so I can either snap right to it to immediate intersection, or I can do a deferred intersection, and so I'm going to defer it, I'm going to pick that intersection of that object, and the intersection of the, oh, look at that, it's, it snaps right to where it should be, of course, and so there you go, and so the diameter here is going to be 0.325, all right, and uh, with the ortho on, draw two vertical lines starting from the quadrants on each side of the small circle. Sure. And so we're going to go ahead and type the L. And I'm going to choose quadrant there. And we need to go ortho. And there's a couple ways we could either just go F8 and snap the ortho mode on, or F8 off. And without F8 on, the ortho is turned off. Now I'd have to rely on these, which are the polar extensions. And so those are those angular extensions. See how it's snapping to the right? You know, float, 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 float. And it snaps north, okay? There we go. And I'm just going to drop it right there. Just for a minute, hit escape. And a couple, I could draw another one, or I could do the mirror command. All right, so we'll go to the mirror command. Pick that line. And the mirror is going to be the center of that little guy here. And now, now I do need the ortho turned on, so I'll hit F8, there's ortho on, and I'm just going to aim my cursor north and hit pick. 
I'm not going to erase the source object. There we go. And so that that starts your 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 uh, slot, and you're probably of course going to want to trim that. And so we'll just pick those two lines there. And we also need it's a slot, so we're going to pick that. Um, oh, oh, undo. Trim that again. Tr and pick these there. Wow, that new trim is just so fantastic. And we also need to trim. Oh God. Tr in there. Okay. And so here we have the beginnings of the slot. And the book wants us to go and start the the polar array. Same thing. Six of them around the entire unit. Um, now, what I recommend is convert those to a polyline first. Okay, so I'm going to type PE. I'm going to select one of them. Right click. Notice there's no polyline edit on the right click menu. That's because it's a it's a line. Okay, so I'm going to start the P edit P edit command. And it, it's asking me to select the polyline, so I'm going to pick that one, and it, it warns me, do you want to turn it into one? Sure! Hit yes. There we go. Now that's a polyline segment, I'm going to use the join command. I'm going to join that, that, and that. Hit enter, and hit enter. Now, if I pick any part of that little slot, you can see that it's, it's going to light up as one object. That's because it's a polyline. And honestly, so shouldn't these. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to P edit and start that first arc there. Do I want to turn it into one? I certainly do. And I'm going to join all of these. Okay. Now, we're going to we're going to undo a lot of this by doing my the next step which is the array, of course. Um, I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to hit enter. All right. So now the entire outside, see how if I select it, the whole outside of that, that um, piece is one item. All right, let's go ahead and do the uh, array again. So the array defaulted back to the polar now. Okay, so I'm going to pick the polar array tool. I'm going to pick that one polyline, which is the slot on the top. Hit enter. And the base point is, of course, the center of the whole world. There we go. And it defaults again to six with a full uh, fill uh Ray, fill um, angle 360. I'm going to hit enter to be done. And uh, again, we're going to have to deal with this, so I'm going to explode that array. There we go. And let's go and deal with the trims. And so I'm going to trim there, 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 and pull those slots right out. Okay, and now we have individual polylines. Okay, now we can just Join them, right? So use the oops, use the join command and just pick everybody. And so these are all polylines, but it's poor practice. It's poor practice for a draftsman to leave those as individual objects. And so now I have one big polyline, which is the outside perimeter of that cam piece. We're going to get rid of that guy because that was just to, to float the slots around it. And so now we've got to do the keyway itself. Let's go do ahead and go ahead and do a circle of diameter 1.67. Again from the center there, 1.67. And another one for the hub. Repeat the circle from there with a diameter. Type D for diameter of one inch. All right. And now we need the key. There is the keyway. The, here's the keyway. And so we're going to do a rectangle. All right. There's a couple ways of doing this. Draw a, two point, a 0.25 wide and 0.15 tall triangle at the top of the circle. And I'm just going to float it over here just because I'm going to show you how we do this. So I'm going to type D for dimensions. And we're going to type 0.25 there and then 0.15 there. I'm going to just click right there. And so, um, and so we have this rectangle. And the keyway needs to be at the top of the bottom circle here. And so I'm going to move the rectangle. Sorry. Repeat move from there. 
base point of the move command, I'm going to shift, right click, and choose the midpoint of the bottom rectangle. Uh, F8 off to go back to come out of ortho. And now I'm going to type the shift right click, the intersection of the center line, and that one here. Um, there we go. And we do need to bring this down. Um, not entirely sure how the the book wants us to finish that. So what I'm going to do is uh, trim that section here, and I'm going to extend um, extend using a boundary edge this time. Using that as the fence, hit enter, and now I'm going to select that piece and that piece, how it extends out. And now the trim work, the trim command. Oops, sorry, undo. It's an, it's an old-fashioned way. There we go. There's your keyway. Same thing with the keyway. Let's go ahead and uh, poly edit that. P edit. I'm going to pick that arc segment. I want to turn it into one, yes. And then I'm going to join it with that polyline there. All right. And there we go. So now we have a single polyline there. We have a single circle here. And the main unit is a polyline as well. So I'm going to hit save, of course, and put that in my project location. Let's see. Um, I don't really have a great folder here. So I'll put it there. And I'm going to call this one um, Cam 4.2. Very good. And so we'll do zoom, zoom the extents. That's how the cam is going to look on the model space. And let's go take a look at the at the um, paper space. And so it's obviously kind of small, so what I'm going to do is just double click into the viewport and zoom in there a little bit. And while I'm here, I'm going to go back out using the selector. And I'll set it at 3 quarter inch. No, oh, it's big, bigger than that. We'll go 6 inches equals a foot. And we'll go there. Um, I'm going to lock the viewport by hitting the padlock. Hit save. Make sure you change all this information here. And the scale is, in fact, 6 inches equals 1 foot. And the job name is Cam 4.2. Very good. And, of course, it's always sheet number 1 of 1, if there's only one. Enter, save it, and finally what you need to do is right click on the tab and we're going to plot it to PDF. Always make sure your color based CTP file is activated, hit the preview button. Looks good, it's basic, that's all we're looking for at this point in time. Uh, we'll start to d annotate things later and we'll work on our scaling as well. You go ahead and hit right click and choose plot. Send it out to the same project, uh, same location that I was saving the mother at in classwork. And go ahead and call it Cam 4.2 underscore Bailey for your last name. Right click. And that's what you would submit for, for class. Okay. Um, any questions, go ahead and uh, check me on Canvas. Or you can shoot me an email. Thanks very much and happy AutoCADing.